Hello and welcome to the introduction for the National Electrical Code. So this chapter is going to be a little different than the others and this video is also going to be a little different in the sense that I don't have any step-by-step -step demonstrations to show you. Instead I'm going to briefly just cover for those of you who would rather watch the video than read below uh, what my suggestions are for how to properly use this module and some of the more important topics to focus on. So first things first, National Electric Code, uh, some people can spend their entire career learning and familiarizing themselves with the code. So that's not our intention with studying for it. We simply want to get as many points possible on the exam. In doing so, in studying for it, what we want to do is practice becoming familiar with more or less what is in each article and each chapter of the code. Um, start to have a kind of gut understanding and feel for where we would start looking for a particular answers to questions just like you would do on the job and more importantly we want to improve the speed at which we can look up questions that we don't know just yet so one thing to expect on the exam um, expect the questions to probably not be familiar with them and probably not come from any practice problems this is done on purpose and the practice problems below that means don't skip them Use them to increase your proficiency at using the code book to find the answers that you need. So um, let's talk about the NEC. First thing is they now allow you to access it online for free. All you gotta do is sign up. We've got the link down below and it is rendered for mobile devices. So when you're on the go, when you need to look something up, that's a quick way to squeeze a couple of extra minutes here and there. Another thing is make sure you're using the correct of the NEC for the exam. Uh, at the time of this recording, I believe it is the 2014 version is being used. Uh, we're including the link to also check. The NEC does update every three years. Um, there's a good chance to expect that a couple of the questions will come from the newest edition just to make sure people are following the specs and to make sure that people are up to date with the new changes. Okay, so we start this module with quite a bit of definitions and I'm intentionally leaving them out. So what I want you to do with these is to go in the NEC and any of these definitions that you don't already know, fill them in after you print this out or uh, at the very least highlight them. But wording is very important, language is crucial. So very small different parts of a definition you could be tested on. Uh, there could be a couple of tricky answers, so be very mindful of that. Next, as you work your way through the module, um, same thing as the definitions, you're going to see quite a bit of fill-in-the-blank answers. I encourage you to complete as much of this as you feel that you need to do in order to improve your relationship with the NEC. Um, if you work in a design job where this is your bread and butter and you do this day in, day out, obviously you won't need to spend as much time as some other students. but um, if you were like me when I first took the exam and I wasn't really familiar with it, I really encourage you to do as much as possible on it. Does that mean you need to complete 100% of this section to get a passing score on the NEC section of the PE exam? No, but it does mean that the more you fill in and the more you take the time to look up and write down, the more you're going to kind of cement it into memory and the more you're going to learn how to look things up on your own. So when you're looking things up, I suggest using the index, using the table of contents, um, highly, highly, highly suggest to pick up the handbook, not just the code book. The handbook gives very detailed explanations in practical terms for some of the more confusing code words, which I find very useful. Um, they also give excellent diagrams that really help to drive home the point, especially in sections like grounding, where there's so many different terminology that sounds so familiar from grounding conductor, grounding rod, electrode, bonding jumper, things of that nature. So definitely spend the extra money and pick up the handbook if you don't already. It's a, a wise investment and it's not that much more expensive. All right, some of the some of the more key concepts you're going to want to make sure that you spend time familiarizing yourself is dig into overcurrent protection devices, how to properly size um, different fuses and breakers for different pieces of equipment, transformers, motors, uh, conductors, things like that. Make sure you're really familiar with continuous versus non-continuous loads and what exactly that means and how sizing both conductors and overcurrent uh, protection devices changes depending on that. Make sure you're really familiar with conductor opacity. Um, be really familiar with understanding which table to use depending on what the problem gives you. Um, know the difference between when you need to use temperature correction factors and when you don't. And uh, make sure you also know how to use those. 
make sure you're familiar with the conductor resistance tables. I guarantee you there's a high chance of probability that you'll run into a question either on the NEC portion of the exam or say on voltage drop or something similar where you're going to need to look up first the impedance of a conductor before you can continue on with something like a circuit analysis problem. So make sure you know that table backwards and forwards. You're not going to want to spend a whole lot of time looking for it on the exam. Uh, next, grounding. Grounding is a really hot topic lately. Um, be sure I would spend a lot of time in this and really understand the different definitions. Again, they all sound really similar, so make sure you go through grounding quite a bit. Um, GFCI and AFCIs, um, make sure you understand the operation and theory of both. Know the differences between the two of them. Be able to uh, look at a diagram of each and be able to know what part does what. Know why they're important. Um, know specific applications when you'd want to use an AFCI over a GFCI and vice versa. You're going to want to touch base in voltage drop because it appears in the NEC and it has its own chapter. You're going to want to, again, be familiar with uh, transformers, motors, especially when it comes to overcurrent protection devices. Uh, make sure you touch base on working spaces, safe uh, working boundaries, clearances by voltage class, arc flash boundaries, um, tables for motor locked rotor amps and things of that nature. So those are my recommended topics to dig into first and to spend time on. But I really want to stress that don't don't falsely think that if you study and learn everything that a course tells you to do, that you're going to know every answer to every NEC problem that you run into. I guarantee that's not going to happen. So you really want to focus on competency in using the NEC like any other tool in your arsenal. It's even fun to turn to a random page, look up a specific definition, and then see how quickly you can get to that using whatever method you're most uh, comfortable with, such as the index or the table of contents or just going page by page. And you can even time yourself too. It's a great exercise. So that's about it. Just practice is key. Practice really is key. All right, that's our introduction and how to prepare for the National Electric Code portion of the Electrical PE exam. For more PE exam practice problems and to try our online review course, come check us out at www.electricalpereview.com. We'll see you soon.